wonky log cabin quilts are my go-to quilt for using up strip scraps and I accumulate strips faster than I can even deal with them. So this is a great way to use up a bunch of them all at once. Now I have made several wonky log cabin quilts in the past, some of my favorite quilts in fact, and I have almost always trimmed the blocks down to a uniform size and assembled them to make the assembly go super smoothly. But today I wanna to show you the alternative to that, and that is a wonky improv assembly method. I think you're really gonna love it. It's gonna give our quilts a whole different look and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So I hope you join me. Grab some scraps and let's get sewing. Now I have my Halloween themed strip scraps here in front of me and I love a Halloween quilt so I couldn't pass up the opportunity to do another one this year. I've decided to do an orange center to my box surrounded by these gray strings, but I have made a wonky log cabin in a number of different colors. So pick colors that you love. It could be one color, a monochrome layout, or it could be a total rainbow, whatever it is that you wanna make today. So I'm gonna grab this orange scrap here, and this is gonna be the center of my wonky lug cabin. Now I haven't pressed this or anything, and I'm not gonna worry too much about it, but I do need to cut this down into a vaguely square-ish shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not gonna measure this. I'm just gonna grab my rotary cutter and trim it down. And this is gonna be the center of my block. Now I'm not gonna bother to press this right now because I am gonna press this in just a minute when I add my first log to it, but I am gonna pick a relatively flat side to begin with so that I'm not sewing against really harsh creases. If your scraps are the type that are really, really wrinkled, you might wanna give it a quick press, but again, don't worry about it. This is improv, this is wonky, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once we have our little square ready, then we're gonna grab our first strip. And I'm just gonna grab one. And you can tell that this has like a curvy edge on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a, a generous matchup for this side here. I'm gonna err on the side of making it a little too big because we will be trimming it down in the future. But right now we just wanna make sure we have enough to cover the seam. And then like every other block you've ever sewn, right sides together, and we're gonna sew the seam. Usually I really strive to have perfect quarter inch seams, but when you're dealing with wonky scraps or scraps that might be fraying or that aren't perfectly evenly cut, you can use a larger seam allowance to capture all of those kind of wonky wobbly edges. And it's fine. You can go up to whatever seam allowance you feel most comfortable with. You can always trim it down to a quarter of an inch if you feel like that's necessary, or you can just lead a, a little bit larger seam allowance in the back of your quilt. No one will ever know. <laughs> Almost all of my wonky quilts have crazy variations in their seam allowances <laughs> and can't tell from the front. So I usually move my seam guide out of the way and just sew a generally straight line. Log cabins don't have any intersecting seams, so I generally press to the log I just added, and that will keep all of your seam allowances kind of going out from the center and lay nice and flat without having to press them all open. Now that we have our first two logs assembled, it's time to trim one side to give us a straight edge to work from to sew our next log to. Now I'm gonna be working counterclockwise here, so I am gonna trim this left side. If your orange square was relatively straight, then you could use that to work off of. I'm just going to bring my ruler down and trim off a little bit of orange and a little bit of gray to give myself a really nice straight edge. Now that I have that nice straight edge, it's time to grab another piece of fabric. And I am just looking for one that's a little bit different than the one I just used. And I'm going to lay it next to our nice straight edge. And again, cut a slightly generous piece of fabric to sew together. And then it is right sides together. And I usually sew with my seam allowances up and that flat piece of fabric down to the bed of my machine, just so that this doesn't catch on the bed of my machine and flip and become a little wad of fabric. But you can sew it whichever way you like. 
If you always put the log you just sewed at the top, then you will always be trimming that left side. So I'm gonna do that now so we're ready to add our next. I'm going to keep adding logs working counterclockwise around my orange square until I get this up to around 10 inches or so. If you ever lose your place and don't know which log to add next, the side that you will need to add to next always has two seams popping out into the side. See all of these others only have one seam, whereas this side has these two seams. So this log needs to be next. My square is now about 10 inches and I have not done an even number of rounds of logs. This side has three logs coming out from the center, so does this, but these two sides only have two. Now I'm okay with that, but if you want to have an even number of logs on your blocks, then you can just add more strips and bring this up and it'll be a bigger block. And that's fine because there will probably be other bigger blocks that we're going to match it up to in assembly, which is what comes next. So my blocks are already up on my design wall and two of them have already fallen off, but that's okay. Um, if you haven't seen my design wall before, it is a movie projector screen and it hangs from the ceiling in front of my bookshelves. Now this is really handy for me because I don't have any extra wall space in this room. So I can pull that projector screen down when I want it and clamp a piece of batting to it and it works great. But um, when I don't need it, then I can just roll it up out of the way. So I have my blocks all laid out and I just took a few minutes to distribute the oranges a little bit so that I didn't have two really bright oranges next to each other. But now we need to talk about assembly strategy. We want this to look like an improv quilt. So we don't want to assemble our blocks into rows and then sew our rows together because then there will be multiple really obvious horizontal seams that go across our quilt and it's going to take away from that improv look that we've been working to achieve. So instead of working in rows, we are going to work in clusters of blocks. So these are the two blocks that I want to sew together and they come from this little empty area up on my design wall. Now this block is shorter than this block, but I want to sew them together. But if I do, then there will be kind of a jog. I have two choices. I could trim this block down to match, or I can build this block up to be as tall as this seam. And that's what I'm going to go for. I made these blocks kind of on the smaller side, knowing I would add to them. And if given the choice, I'd rather make my quilt a little bit bigger than a little bit smaller. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to add a strip. We could add it to this side or this side. It's totally your choice. This is going to be exactly like we were doing when we were building up our block. I'm going to cut a piece of fabric that is generous to that side and sew it on. So now I have two blocks that are much closer in height than they were before because I added this black strip to the top of this one. I'm going to just trim off these edges so that I have nice straight edges to assemble. And now I can do right sides together and sew them together. So now because these blocks aren't exactly the same size, one is going to overhang the other um, a little bit on both sides. You could move that all to one side or to the other. It doesn't really matter. I usually just kind of center it. Now our first pair is assembled. I'm gonna put this back up on the wall and grab two more blocks from that little cluster up in the right corner. So these are the two blocks that are just below the pair that we sewed together. And again, I have this block, which is a little bit shorter than this block here. So I'm going to add a strip to the bottom to bring it up to size and then sew them together. So now I have two clusters here that are ready to get sewn together, but one is significantly shorter than the other. So we're going to add some strips. I could add them to either side. I could add them to both sides. This is totally up to you. I think I, I'm going to add all of mine to this side. So I'll probably end up needing two strips here to bring this side out to here so that I can sew it together really nicely. I'm going to set this one aside since it's the right size and add some strips. I've added my two extra strips right here and now these pieces are about the same size. So I'm going to clean up my two edges and sew them together. <laughs> 
I have the first little chunk of my quilt all sewn together, and this is the process that just repeats itself throughout the entire assembly process. You're going to pick the next two seams that go together, whether that is a block or a section. You're going to see if they match up. They probably won't. And you're just going to add strips to the shorter section to bring it up to size. Now, as your sections get bigger and the sides you need to add to get longer, one strip of fabric may not be enough. It may not reach all the way across, in which case you can just seam multiple pieces together. You can use relatively long pieces, so there's just one join, or you can insert some of these little pieces that we cut off from our strips as we were making our blocks to be little, little joining pieces. And that will add a little bit more interest to your wonky blocks. I'm going to keep assembling my quilt up here on my board so you can see how it all fits together in the end. And then we will talk about trimming and quilting. So here's the assembly process for my quilt. I have all of my blocks up on my design wall and all I'm doing here is taking two blocks or two sections or pairs of blocks and sewing them together. If the seams don't match, I'm adding a strip and making the shorter seam longer so that I can get the whole quilt done. I'm working in sections so I don't develop any really long seams that go all the way across my quilt. But in the end, I end up with this kind of four patch look and end up sewing it together kind of of in sections and then I have one long seam that goes from top to bottom here and that's the last seam in the quilt. Once my top was complete I decided to quilt mine before trimming it but you could do the opposite if you have a long armor committed to this or if you just want a little bit of an easier job. My quilt is done and hanging up behind me. I think this quilt turned out to be really modern and fresh thanks to the improv fun assembly technique we used that avoided all of those harsh seam lines that went all the way across the quilt. I ended up quilting mine with my Halloween design from my shop that has all of the Halloween words going in different directions, and I chose a really fun bright orange thread to quilt it with since it's Halloween, you gotta have some fun. I haven't bound this quilt yet because I can't decide on a color, but um, it'll get done soon, I promise. <laughs> Now, if you liked the improv assembly of this, there is another video I have on my channel about improv curves that you may really enjoy. And if you are looking for some free motion quilting help, then next week I have a whole video planned on a very domestic, regular sewing machine friendly spider web design that will look great on this quilt or any other Halloween quilt. And if you aren't into Halloween designs, then there's a variation that's just like a really easy, fun swirl that would look great on any quilt. So I hope you join me then. And until then, happy quilting!